Hey everybody, welcome to Jerry's Live. As always, I'm your host, Amy Gardner-Dean, and we have a really fun little show for you. It's something that we did um, while we were in quarantine filming from home, but we had so much fun with it and people seemed like they enjoyed it that I thought instead of it just being that art at home that we'd actually do it as an episode. So the episode is JL160. It is, we're, just, we're gonna be, it's sketch and draw along, paint along postcards. So uh, the little kit that we put online is like around $21. Uh, it's got one of the Lucas, Lucas Aquarelle watercolor boxes, which is adorable. Comes with a little brush and everything. So 12 colors, really compact, fits right in a pocket. It's, my phone is actually bigger than this. So, so it's a great little compact um, watercolor set. We've got some of the um, accurate waterproof drawing tackle pens. Um, the size that I like are the 0.5. It's just, it has enough line where it's easy to see but not so much where it's kind of fat and, you know, not very elegant if you're trying to make something kind of very um, fine-lined and finessed. Uh, then in the set, we've got, and we've, next week we're gonna actually be doing watercolor pencils, uh, drawn paint along, but, um, and that will have a tin of our new Reflections postcards, which has more, but this is for kind of, the set was kind of, with a budget price in mind to try to keep it between $20 and $25. Strathmore's um, set of 15 watercolor postcards. So we're gonna be using that today with this episode. We'll use the Reflections ones next week. Um, and then I wasn't sure what we wanted to do. And when I was watering flowers very early this morning, as the sunlight came up, I realized I had some pretty roses and stuff. So I just, grabbed a bunch of different things and um, and I think that I've decided we're gonna do kind of the tangerine colored rose because that's just an easier thing to draw for a beginner because it's a nice tight rosebud. Some of the other leaves and, and flowers start getting a little, I was concerned a little too crazy for, um, for people's comfort level trying this out with us. So, um, so we'll start that in a minute. This kit is really easy to find on our website. It's the juriesartorama.com website. In the search bar, you're gonna type in JL160. That's JL160, that's the keyword. Hit enter, that will take you to the list, just the, the three items to, um, to get this little set if it's something you're interested in. If not, this is a drawn paint along, right? So feel free to grab whatever you've got at hand and paint along, draw along with us and enjoy yourself. Um, ideally, obviously we're using watercolors and technical pens, but you know, I'm not gonna be a stickler for it. You can, you can pick whatever you'd like and work with us. Now, the contest for this week, Katie brilliantly um, was miniatures. So since we are working on postcards, that's the ideal way to kind of kick that off. We'll have those contest winners at the end of this. I still feel like I'm at a news desk, by the way, yeah. Katie. <laughs> reporting the news on Twitter. Yes, right? Exactly. So um, so let's get started because we want some time to have some fun with us. I'm going to take this extra leaflet off here just so it's not so large. Now what we're going to do is we're going to focus in nice and tight close up um, on so we've got the flower, we've got the little postcard, we've got the little watercolor set. So it'll be easier for you guys to see kind of what we're drawing and it'll, give you the opportunity to draw and paint along a lot easier. Uh, we definitely want this side for this rose. I'm just gonna put it on a white canvas so it's easier to kind of see the outline of it. And unfortunately, I'm seeing things from an angle here, you're seeing them from above, so I've got a monitor there. So that's what I'm gonna be looking at to draw it. So if it seems weird that I'm staring at you while I'm actually drawing, it's not just you, it's, it's the monitor. So, um, so that's what we'll be using. Um, and we'll just work away. I guess I need to say real quick what colors come in this set so you know if you've got colors at home, what, what we're working with if you want it to look similar. Um, there's lemon yellow primary, there's cadmium yellow hue, there's cadmium red hue, there is magenta primary, there's cyan primary, which is your primary blue, 
ultramarine blue, which is going to be kind of a, a redder um, blue. So we've got good mixing colors. We've got a warm and cool yellow. We've got a warm and cool kind of versions of, of red. We've got warm and cool blue. Um, what that means is if I say a warm yellow, that's going to be tinted more towards orange. Cooler one's going to be tinted more towards green. So obviously if I want to make a green with a yellow, I want to use that cooler yellow. That means the same thing for the reds for the blues. So that's something when you're color mixing and we've talked about it a lot on the show, but I know we got a lot of new viewers. So I will just be reiterating that as we go and explaining why I'm going to pick the colors that I'm picking. Um, then we've got a Viridian, uh, which is a phthalo green. We've got an olive green, which is a chromium oxide green, uh, a yellow ochre, an English red, which is kind of a brownish red, not quite burnt sienna, but it's, it's not really red either. It's a nice color for kind of toning stuff down, gray earth tone color, a raw umber, and a Payne's gray. There is no black here. We, if we need something dark, we can make it ourselves doing either something that's a chromatic um, black, which will be usually a red and a green primary, and we'll go from there. All right. So, perfect. Katie's already switched. She's a pro and on top of it. All right, I need want to make sure this is in the view for you guys. Now, you can center the rows however you want. I'm probably going to make it go off the postcard a little bit because I like kind of a, a more dynamic composition. And I might kind of fudge the leaves a little here or there um, to make sure that happens. Um, stem is, you know, we'll do the stem, but I also, I think I'm going to do a little bit of shadow because I think that makes it look not like kind of a weird cardboard cutout looking drawing. Um, the style drawing that we're going to use to do this is called a creative contour drawing. And we've had some drawing classes on the show. And what that is about is about worrying more about the contour of the edges of things, not this as a whole. I'm not going to sketch this in, you know, with because we're using a technical pen. So any mark you put down, you're going to leave. You're not going to be able to erase that up. So the nice thing about a creative contour drawing is you're looking at the area that you're drawing at that time and slowly putting the pieces of the rest of the item in together with that contour drawing to make that whole. So you're not doing it as kind of a whole complete drawing as you go. So, all right. So to do that, the rosebud obviously is the most important part of this kind of exercise. So I'm going to work on that first. And I've got the unique capability of I'm wearing reading glasses to do this, but then I'm having to look up at the screen. So I'm not sure how detailed my contour drawing is going to be <laughs> as a result, but we'll, we'll see what we can do about it. Okay. So just have your pen or a pencil or whatever. I'm going to start with this rosebud. You want to bring it up to the top. And my hand is going to get in the way. I'm, I'm, I know. So I'm going to try to keep it out of the way as much as possible, guys. That is another petal that's coming over there. All right, this is cupping and curving kind of up and around this. My rose is going to go off the page just slightly. Now we're not putting in any shading or anything like this at this point. We're just getting that contour drawing in. Okay. I'm going to come over here and work on the stem or I guess the little, um, leaves that kind of are, make up the outside edge of that rosebud before it blooms. It's got some kind of sawtooth leafing on it. I'm just kind of trying to decide as I go where that is. It doesn't have to be perfect. We're just sketching. We're relaxing. We're having fun. Don't give yourself any judgment on this. You're just 
This is a good way to practice draw. This is a great way to actually um, just kind of, if you're out and about, if you're uh, painting and drawing on site, if you're traveling, just to kind of make some kind of sketches of the things that are around you um, to practice with. And if you guys have larger paper, obviously you can crop however you would like. This isn't a one size fits all. You don't have to do it the same way. And as we've talked about with drawing, your eyes need to be on the subject as much as possible. So if you can do 90% of the time you're actually looking at the item, you're going to have a much more successful rendition of it than if you just kind of draw what you know. Draw what you see, not what you know. That stem's getting really fat. It's very different to draw looking across and down and not being up over the drawing. Because I either usually tilt it like we do on the show, or I'm kind of standing over it. This is a weird sensation to be. That's okay. It's called adapting. This is a little curly on it there. All right. why we practice. Skipped right across the page. Which mistakes like that will happen? It's fine because once you start doing the uh, doing the watercolor it won't be as noticeable. As you can see, these these are things that I'm putting together, the different places on the rows as I go along. They're kind of fitting together. I'm drawing each little shape as its own entity, which is that creative contour. These aren't actually vein lines, it's places I'm, I'm seeing shadow that I'm kind of putting that as a note to myself for later when I go to do that watercolor. I will remember those are there because I've got those notes there. Since this will be darker, it'll be kind of hidden in that drawing. Now this, not all roses have these kind of sawtooth edges. Some have a lot cleaner, smoother leaves. This one just has that kind of little difference. So 
if you feel comfortable putting that on, great. If you don't, it's entirely up to you. And you can see I have missed where this tucks in under that, but I, it's not. We're just getting kind of the essence of the rose. And me looking away as I drew that, I did not, was not looking at the drawing. So you can see that I did not get that put in there. All right. So we pretty much have our rows there. This comes up over here a little bit more. What I'm going to do is just add another kind of petal behind it. Just so it looks a little bit smoother. Um, shadowing. I guess we did put shadow in that other one, didn't we, Katie? Mm -hmm. We did it. So let's go ahead and, and do that. Um, I'm going to do a little bit of kind of small cross hatching just to kind of help with the shadow where I want this to be. Try not to bump the rows because I don't want anybody to who's still working on the drawing to have issues with it. Just putting a little bit down the stem to kind of help round that out when it's being painted. Now, if this was larger, I would probably be more worried about this hatching actually being rounded edge to kind of give that contour of the roundness of the stem. But since these are so little, it's just, it's not. And the paint will help kind of make that read more dimensionally. It's not as important. part's pretty light so I think we're going to leave that as is that is as well there's a little bit I'm gonna just do in there since that's kind of shadowed behind the flower Whoop. these leaves. Let's go ahead and add a little bit of shadow. Stem's got a pretty good shadow too about there, so we're gonna kind of I'm just putting a little bit of hatching in a few places just to kind of help us see some of our form. I'm not going to do it where the shadow is going to go because I want those to be good and soft. Okay. 
I think that's probably good. It's enough where everybody can see it easily and we can work from there. All right, yes. I had one question. Sure. How would that pin compare to like a Micron? And what size are you using? It's the, um, actually I, I think I put a 0.5 and a 0.3 in the kits. Um, I picked up the 0.3 actually, so that's why it's a lot lighter looking, which I didn't mean to. I showed the five and then I picked up the three and I've forgotten that I put two in. Doop, doop. Well, that's okay. Cause working small, you know, and some people want really super fine light lines and some people do want to put a kind of a ghosted in drawing in pencil. So if they have any problems, they can erase and then go over it with the pen and then erase the, the pencil marks. Totally fine. Always with any technical pen, make sure that you let the pen dry before you actually erase it because right away it's not always, it takes a little bit to set. So um, something to remember. So that's, that's what we're using. Very similar to Micron. The color is just a little bit kind of, I guess, more sepia. It's got just a little bit of a more natural color where Micron can be a little glaringly black. Yeah, so if you're doing, especially with, with things like this, florals, landscapes, things like that, where you don't have a lot of natural black, these are actually a very nice choice for that because it's, it's a more kind of natural color than that just, you know, comic book outline black that you tend to get with the Micron. If, if that's something that, that you notice and it bothers you. Some people it does, some, some people it doesn't, but that's, and these are what half the price of a Micron. So that's yeah. also another nice thing with pretty much the same ink volume, same t tip feel and everything. So, um, so it, it's just, it's a good value pen. Plus I think, I don't think we sell open stock microns other than in the store i think you have to buy a box of 12 where you can get these singly open stocks so that's another thing to uh why these are a great deal for this kind of thing who who uh, not that people don't buy them by the dozen but you know you only I need have so many of them one to carry around there's like two in my purse a couple a handful of my yeah you don't even want to know yeah, how many i've got so much. don't want to know how many i've got okay so first, um, I think we're going to work on, I don't know, I want to work on all of it at the same time. I probably will, because you know that's how I roll. Okay, um, we're going to work on the stem and kind of like right up in here on the rose and kind of in this yellow area first, because we'll kind of work with yellow. Let's grab the cadmium. I'm going to flip this over so I've got the colors. So if anybody got this set... Set it up so you can see which one I'm talking about. Now this is this is their little um, Aquarell Studio, which isn't their 1862 Professional, but I'm here to tell you this thing packs a powerful punch for pigment, doesn't it, Katie? Mm -hmm. It was it was as we used it for the set for uh, for the at home thing. I could not even believe shockingly so, yeah. How pretty the the colors were. So that's a great value. Uh, yeah. So nice, vibrant yellow right there. We're gonna, I'm just gonna kind of ghost that on, putting a little more down here. And with, ooh, ooh, sorry, I moved it a little bit. With it being a pan that you can, with a, in a student or, or artist grade pan, not the professional quality pan, to um, grab that much color with just a couple swipes is also really nice. Now I'm gonna take a little bit of water since that's pretty harsh and thin, thin it. So I can kind of pull that color across here, but not have it quite that same saturation. Because we're going to go back in with some uh, kind of more of an orange. I want it to be there under it, but I don't want it to be quite that saturated. Okay. So we've got that on there. Now we're going to work on kind of this whole little kind of stem assembly that peels back off the rosebud. We're gonna use that more lem that lemon yellow that's that greener yellow. And I'm gonna add a tiny, tiny touch of, not the, I'm gonna show you two things here. Viridian's very blue, green. We don't want that there. That is not blue green up in here. That is uh, 
that that we can start using a little bit in the leaves but these leaves actually have some red undertones so we may not even want to use them then we're going to use that that chromium olive green see how that's a much more kind of neutral natural green putting just a little bit in there because I don't want it to be too bright be careful kind of painting along that edge of what you've got that's already wet there because um, you don't want it to be to kind of travel into each other and we're going to be kind of pushing that as we go with this because this is a demo that we are doing all at one time we don't have a hair dryer out And the nice thing about this brush is this act for being a teeny tiny little brush can hold a lot. It's a nice little synthetic kind of tack line. Okay, I'm going to grab a little bit more of that green and I'm putting it in as we get a little bit further down the line for this because I don't want it to be too like really green right up close because you can see how kind of pale it's almost like a silvery gray silvery green gray quick question yes actually two sure are watercolors in general archival um pigments in the watercolors will be archival watercolor as a medium it tends to not be as archival as um depending on the pigment that's used in the light fastness and the manufacturer what types of additives they add in it um tends to not be uh because you don't have you don't have the resin in the the acrylic okay the acrylic medium and you don't have the oil in the oil paint to help protect that pigment from fading watercolor is is pigment a little bit of um, gum arabic maybe some other filler maybe a tiny little bit of honey it becomes very obviously watery you put it on the paper and everything else disappears right so that's you're not leaving a lot in between just paper and pigment to protect that little skim of pigment and and i'm not taking this it's not like a marker where or a paint where it's heavy and there's a thick film this is just a little bit of pigment almost like a stain right with water so that's something that um that when you buy watercolors you need to check the light fastness of those colors that you're buying um, especially with ones like the pinks, the opera red and opera pink and stuff like that, because those are not uh, light fast pigments typically. Okay, just grabbed a little bit more of that than I was expecting. Did that answer the question? Was that the well, and then kind of somebody, just? They're, they're having a discussion about um, student versus professional versus artist grades. They're wondering if these are student grade technically. Um, these are tech. I think they did have one student grade under this, um, that was Terzia, wasn't it? But they don't act like it. No, these, these are not, these are student grade priced, but they act more like, what, what the difference between Lucas Studio in any of their mediums and their professional grade is that they, it's the same pigments that they're using to make the 1862. They're just, they're taking out the, um, the cobalt's cadmiums, all those colors that, that are much more expensive, that are mined, that can be toxic. And there's probably slightly less of the pigment in it, okay? Um, that's the biggest difference because I've got that 1862 kit and these colors are are just as vibrant as the the work that we've done with the 1862. Don't you feel like, mm -hmm. Katie? Yeah, those, those pack a punch. Yeah. Especially for that price point, man. Oh, yeah. And then... Um, the next question is, are artist and professional grades the same thing? They um, they things? used to be, it used to just be called artist grade and that meant that it was professional, but it's, it's not really professional is going to be your, your higher echelon. The ones with multiple series, the ones where there's just a ton of pigment in it. The problem is it's, it's kind of like, it's not something that's regulated. Okay. It's not like it has to have so many grams of pigment per, you know, pan or something like that, where it's something, somebody can say, this is our version of a professional paint. That doesn't mean that it's necessarily the top quality professional, right? 
There's lots of, of brands that are out there um, that have gone by the wayside over the years because they, their professional was not professional compared to other manufacturers. So um, professional grade should be using most almost all you know pigments with with good very good excellent light fastness um the ones that may be lower rated are just ones that maybe are really traditional pigments that people love and just don't want to get rid of and they know the risks that are involved with them um but they're not going to have a lot of you know things that are fugitive or or fluorescence or, or things like that in them because those are not those are not professional. Okay, I'm just kind of working, trying to get some green on this. Um, we're going to come back and we're going to darken it. Actually, I think I might start darkening it some as we go. So this has a red undertone in the sleeve. I don't know if that, does that pick up on your monitor, Katie? Mm -hmm. Um, Magenta, I'm going to show you guys this. I'm going to put it over here because I don't want to accidentally. Okay, so stuff. see this one. God, look at how much that pulls up right from that. That is too pinky purple, right? See it down by the JL uh, 160. This cad red is going to be very bright red, okay? And this is why you swatch your paints because this is something. Now, see, that's a nice, that's a neutral, that's a little bit more. Uh, you know, the the English red is, is typically um, a red oxide base. That's going to be more opaque. So you can use it to add two things, but you don't want to paint it straight out like super thick because it's going to be, unless you're wanting it to be more opaque. I'm going to add a little bit of that because that's kind of a nice brownish red. See how that starts darkening that? That made a big difference in darkening it. I'm gonna add a little bit more green and a little bit more of that. That is really close to that color on that leaf. So that's what I'm gonna use to start really coming into this. Ooh, yeah, see, look at how nice. That is like super powerful. I'm gonna actually thin that just a touch and I can kind of pull up from there. Definitely has a little bit more of that kind of nice brownish green quality. Put a little bit more of the green in here for some of these areas that have a little bit more light. Now, um, Payne's Gray, you could kind of gray it down, but Payne's Gray is more blue, so it's cooler. Um, which if, you, if you've never used that, I'm going to put that up here. See how blue that is? It's a really nice blue gray, but it is very blue, which is what Payne's gray should be in a watercolor. Great for seascapes and stuff like that. That will be perfect for the shadows because this is so warm. We want to use cools for the shadows because that will help make that shadow drop away and make the warmth really pop forward. So we're not going to actually add that into our leaf. We're just going to stick with this. We're going to do these leaves and then we're going to pop back up to the to our uh, flower bud again, just I've been trying to kind of give it some some dry time to wait for just a second. We have a couple people asking if they need to varnish it or what they need to do to be able to send it through the mail. Uh, yeah, you. I would say definitely if you're going to send it through the mail, get um, like a spray varnish, like a solivar or something like that. Um, that's got some UV protection and it's a mineral spirit based. Something like workable fixative might work, but not, it's not guaranteed. Also, if you're sending it through the mail where they're not gonna make this like an art piece later, you just want it to show up nicely through the mail. If, um, I mean, you could even laminate a side. I mean, I've, yeah. I've done that before for, for business cards. You see that I got okay. magenta on my finger and I've already put it into my postcard. Uh, we also have the crystal seal bags that we can that come in the smaller sizes too that you can keep I them closed. I don't know if those can go through the mail because of the plastic. Can they? Mm -hmm. Well, that would be even better. We tested it. That would be better because, because that they would. They can attach the stamp to it. Yep. And when they attach the label to it, it doesn't ruin the artwork. Nice. It ruins the bag. No, that's perfect. Then I just don't know. Didn't know if it was too slick to go through with the equipment. That's it worked. We tested awesome. it. Awesome. Even better. 
Okay, this raw umber, we're going to add a little bit of raw umber to kind of darken this. Raw umber is kind of a nice darker brown pigment just to kind of darken our shadows. Bring the shadow down the down our stem here. I'm finding I'm having problems talking and working. That's a little dark. Pull some of that. There's if I get it dark, all I'm doing is adding a little bit of water and then kind of pushing it. That will lighten it without you having to freak out or use a sponge or any of those types of things. It's an easy way to to lighten that sun. Just making these a little bit. Making it dark right by that bud to help kind of set it off. I need more just the straight green on that one. There's the, the only thing that's hard to manage is this picks up so much paint. You have to kind of, which is watercolor, you can always take the sponge and take some of it off your palette, but it, it picks up, compared to most pan sets, picks up way more than you're expecting. So it's like, whoa, more of that color than I wanted. It's, just, it's one of those little kits that will keep surprising you and keep surprising you. And I've got one that we did the one at home with that I've been carrying with me. I still have so much paint. I cannot even believe how much paint is still left in that thing with being used pretty consistently. Green that up. It's a little, starting to look a little brown. Um, now with this, I'm just kind of working wet and wet, pulling some of the colors into each other while I'm have it wet just to kind of and I'm gonna add a little bit more green in there. All right, let's take a break for a minute and we'll go over to our flower. All right, so that red looks pretty much more like this red here that we've got going on. And we may take some of this yellow and lighten. So I'm gonna just tap a little bit of that in. Yep, that picked up a big bit of pigment more than I want. That looks really good actually. All right, so we'll start adding some of this orange in here. Used to be a little bit drier brush application. I want to keep that yellow right here at the bottom, so I'm going to kind of come down that edge. Paper's just still a little wet. I'm going to leave that just like that. All right. I'm trying to kind of play between a... It's good to have a paper towel. For some reason, I like to use pants for watercolor. And get the excess off. I don't know why. I just always have. Don't want to use the dress. Picking up little touches. The paper was already wet from me adding it on. And I'm just adding little touches where I can control it just that little bit easier. I'm 
Now in here there's a shadow. How am I going to get that shadow? in the rows there without it being kind of, I mean, any, I can't go any darker with this red, right? I mean, I can go a little bit darker and just use straight red, but it's not really a red rose, right? So I can add a little bit of that. But see, that starts making it bright. I don't want it to be so crazy bright so what do you do this um english red is going to look more like kind of an orange and shadow make sure the brush is super dry see how that little bit kind of helps make that read as a darker color but without being too dark. Okay, so let's let this dry because I can feel that the paper is really saturated right now. I don't want to go much further with that. So let's um, let's come to the shadow on the rose. Oh, bad thing about a little tiny brush is it disappears. Huh? Do you need a hair dryer? Yeah. No. It's okay. It's okay. We'll, we'll work our way. Let's see if I can get rid of this magenta that I got on here. Scrubbing that. All right. So our magenta piece is gone. Just gently scrubbed that edge and then lifted the color enough and then added a little extra water so that I could just kind of flick the color off the paper. So there's a big piece of magenta dried that's gone. All right, so with the shadow, I really like that Payne's Gray. So I'm gonna wet that down a little bit more. And I'm going to draw my shadow for the rose. Now I want this to be super light for the time being. I don't want it to get heavy. We can go back in and make some areas a little bit heavier. And you guys probably see the same thing I do where there's kind of some multiple light sources for that shadow, so. And where the rose is closer, obviously the cast shadow is going to be much heavier like this right in here. It's almost, it's pretty much touching the edge of that. So that shadow is a lot darker. And the same for in here, it's casting a much wider area of shadow. The other places where it's not touching is going to be much lighter, so you don't, you don't want to make your shadow all one color, one um, value, because then it's going to read really um, weird and kind of cartoony. Which, especially with us already having a, a you know, technical pen outline drawing, it, it tends to want to do that, you know, read as a more kind of harder edged illustration anyway. Kind of goes on this outside edge. Just shoot if you've got any any questions while we're doing this, Katie. I know that there's probably some that are going to come up, and just go ahead and and interrupt if you need to. Okay. Somebody's just saying, "Ooh, right now." Anywhere you want that to be softer and not have a hard edge, rinse it in the water and kind of paint back into it. Kind of rinse the brush, pull the excess out, and you can kind of softly pick up that edge of the line and soften something. 
that was looking a little too hard, as was that. So just softening it that little bit kind of gets rid of that. Okay, so we've got some pull on this edge. Although I do like some a little bit harder edges in some places, just the variations kind of nice, you know? Now that leaf is lifting up a lot higher. It's because it's coming up towards you, the viewers. So we don't need to make a hard edge right there. The shadow is more down here. The higher it gets, the more it's going to disappear. Okay, so don't don't make that shadow all the way where where it looks like it's flat, because it's actually kind of coming up at you. This one's much harder, right back here. That one's okay to make nice and... hard like that. Okay, and we've got a little bit of softer one over here. very careful to not get that shadow in our orange at all. We don't want to. Again, we've got some different kind of unique shadows because we are in a studio and we've got light coming from some different angles. So Added a tiny little bit of green to that just to kind of soften it. Okay, let's see. Is there anywhere else I want to change on the shadow real quick? little bit more in some of these darker areas. Part here still really wet, so anything I add is going to kind of spread out. So, kind of dry brush a little darker stuff right in there. Okay. Mm, let's pull a little bit more down here. Hmm? Okay. Work a little bit more on that. Rose, it looks like it's starting to dry a little up there. So let's kind of give it a little bit more brightness. I'm going to pop. Is that looking pretty vibrant? I know my screen, the colors are, the kind of value is a little weird. Is that a little better? Alright. Yeah, you can see it pretty good. I actually okay. really like that Payne's Gray. 
Yeah. Oh, I do too. Well, and it's nice because it's it's got that bluer color, and then mm -hmm. we've got the warmer colors of kind of that red and green. Now, this value is very dark. If we this is really blue, try to add just a little bit of that in. And see, that kind of helps a little. Let's give that a shot. Just with watercolor, it's always, you know, you never get those super dark darks like you can with, ooh, look at that. That's nice. Okay, so I added a little Viridian into that. Um, olive green and raw umber and English red mix. And look at how nice and dark that is. I need to be real careful so it doesn't get in my paints gray. As I say that, it just went into the shadow in one area. But that's not the worst thing that could happen. Sometimes I kind of like a little bit of where you get that little bit of kind of color that escapes and runs away and blooms. Sometimes that unplanned nature to it is kind of pretty. All right, we'll just add a little. I want this to be a little bit darker. You can see that I got kind of blue right there. There we go. Paper still got a little bit of moisture to it, so I'm kind of able to. You guys can't probably hear the scrubbing. I'm kind of scrubbing it in. And I'm picking it up a little more wet. Okay, that's good. That's nice. Nice, rich, a little bit deeper color. That makes that leaf fall back behind this one. And in turn, let's kind of do this edge. There. See how that kind of grounds that leaf a little bit? Let's take that. Come up here. We've got this little bit right here. darkening real carefully right along that stem. That'll help kind of 3D Okay, and not with that color, but with a little bit of the more of that straight chromium or olive I'm going to go and go right along the edge of the other side. Just kind of tracing along. That'll help that 3D pop. This one is a little bit, I'm going to use just that straight so that this doesn't get hidden in these, even though it is kind of darker and hidden. I would want this to play that little bit truer green. Okay. 
All right, let's go back to the flower real quick. The bud. Ooh. Yes. Oh, yes, we need those. A little bit more of this while she's bringing me the, the winners. Thank you. Okay, dry brush this in. That means pull out the moisture and just pick up the little bit of color. See how much vibrancy that gives. Then as soon as this is completely dry, and I'm saying completely, go in and I can see a little bit of veining. You can see some of the veining there. I would take that with just a little bit of this really, this kind of brighter red and with a little bit of English ro uh, red and I would, with the tiny point, just put a couple little kind of contours right along, right along there, kind of right in this area here. Okay, but that needs to be like dry, like go away, have a glass of wine, <laughs> unloaded the dishwasher or something and then, and then come back to it. Don't, don't do it. Don't do it right now. Okay. There we go. All right, that kind of helps that fall away. And are there any last questions before we do the winners? Somebody was asking if the palette box itself is metal or plastic. It is plastic. It is not metal. Metal, metal, just cases alone for metal cases will typically be at least 30 to $40 for uh, a pan set. Now the beauty of this is, and we did with not this particular box, but with the first generation one that they had um, that didn't have kind of this, it wasn't quite a slim line, was it, Katie? Mm -hmm. It was bigger. Yeah. Um, is that these pans come out. So for the price that this box is, if you don't want the, uh, you know, the studio grade, you want the 1862 professional grade, you can make your own custom kit with this, or if you have other two watercolors already that you own, just get the little empty half pans. You can make your own custom set for this. You're not, just because these are the colors that come with this box, doesn't mean you're stuck with it. You can't get a palette box this cheap to put your own custom mm -hmm. ones in. So it's, it, and yes, it's not metal, but guess what? It's super light, it's not gonna dent. I've dropped mine at home, I don't even know how many times, or taking it in and out of my pocket or my purse or whatever. Um, and it, it's, it's super durable. Yeah, I throw mine in my purse. So this is, this is a, I mean, kind of one of the neatest little I actually pan like that sets it that's made. Individual wells for the pans instead of like yes. putting them in. They're little, they're very sturdy. Yes. No, they, they stick in really well. Mm -hmm. Um, but they are, but they are removable. Um, and this area you could do like a larger wash. I think that's what the reasoning was behind that. Um, if you wanted to make a bigger, obviously you can't make as much area for a larger, you know, wash. Like if we wanted to go behind this and do it all, you know, blue or something like that, you'd either have to be really creative with kind of edges that dry and being able to blend back into them, or you could make a wash in this. It's, it's a pretty decent sized divot that would give you enough water to do that little postcard. So, so it's very thoughtfully designed and that brush fits in there without jamming. Keep the tip for it once your brush is dry and clean, you can put it back on it, you can put it in there and that brush will last for forever as long as you keep that so that it's not sliding back and forth. So, all right, well awesome. Hopefully everybody had a little bit of fun and you can go back and watch if you want to do this, you know, you watched it this time, you didn't have the materials, you can get them. This is, this lives here for forever, which terrifies me sometimes, <laughs> but, but you can go back and you can actually do this at a, at a different time. Uh, redo it, do it for the first time if you just watched with us. It gives you the option to kind of play all over again. So um, next week for JL161, we've got watercolor pencil set with postcards. So we're gonna do a drawing with that 
and um, and then actually wet it down so you'll get to see kind of the brilliance of working with um, a travel watercolor pencil set. Because just, you know, it's good for you to get out and about nowadays to safely go arch and um, get out in the fresh air. So, all right, do uh, you want me to clear this off and we can show the pictures from above yeah, sure. for the contest? All right, move this way. All right, so this is, so you've got third place on top, right? Yeah, three, two, one. Okay. All right, so number three, four. Okay. All right, number three for an e-gift card prize for our little miniatures um, is this awesome little dog that's done very well by um, Yamalith Rivera um, of Las Vegas, Nevada. You can see, and, and what was great about people kind of following the rules with this was, you can see how tiny this is. It's only four inches. Um, so it looks like maybe four by two, two and a half. Not quite, yeah, four probably. I don't even think it's a full three inches. So wonderfully done. You've got lots of nice detail in here. So cute too. So congratulations on your e-gift card. Number two is, uh, second place, is Melly Greenleaf and from Sandy, Utah. This little watercolor barn that's tiny. I don't know, she must have added two, two hairbrush to do right? that. That's a quarter sitting on that. So how awesome is the detail, the shading, everything that went into that. Now this is obviously expanded, so it's, you know, not as, as uh, but, the, but they're on, the winners are on the, or the, all of the the entries are on there on the website so you can see mm -hmm. uh, so what it looks there. like. This is the first place winner, Michelle Wallace of Newark, Delaware. This is on the back of a penny. She has actually somehow primed that and painted this beautiful portrait on the back of a penny, which is brilliant. I thought this was just, she, she entered three of them. So if you wanna see the other ones, there's one that's a little bumblebee, and then I think a uh, Martin Luther King Jr. one. They're absolutely incredible. That was, it just blew me away. That, great job. So, and we had a ton of really awesome entries. It was very difficult to, to sort through them because there were just a lot. It's amazing how many people tried that out and uh, did some really awesome little work, so. All right, so next week, did you, is collage. Oh, what are the criteria for that? Just collage? Just collage. Collage, just knock yourself out, get all your stuff out. Just have a rip or in good time. Do, do some Zoom meeting with some friends and have just a collage night with a, with a glass of wine and some fun. So, and enter the contest because you could win any gift cards. And then you can support your habit with more art supplies. Mm -hmm. So, all right, well, great. It, hopefully everybody had fun. Hopefully we had some people participating. If you participated, please post it in the Jerry's Facebook live group uh, and use hash, hashtag JL160 so we can see the work. Um, but you, you're always welcome to post stuff in the group. And if you didn't know about it, we have a Jerry's live Facebook group. Um, go to groups on Facebook, search Jerry's live. Um, you have to answer the question to become a member, but we have an awesome community that's very active, posting lots of work, very, very cool, supportive people. So, um, so let us see what you did. And we will see you next week with watercolor pencils. You guys take care. Good night.